Dreams Creates here, coming back to you with floss tube number 111. I even remember to tell you the floss tube number today. That doesn't happen very often. I don't really keep track except to put it on the title. Whatever. It's like any other number. What's my age? I don't know. It's just a number. How are you guys feeling today? You doing good? It is Wednesday, September 2nd. September. How did we get to September? Almost Labor Day. And in, tradi in a traditional world, back to school time, end of summer time, not so traditional, right? I hope you guys are doing well and hanging in there with whatever this school year is bringing you and your loved ones. Um, I have to say, I am so thankful we don't have kids still in school. <laughs> I, I feel for all of you parents out there who are juggling teaching and work and just trying to have some downtime in there amongst all of it. It's, I feel for you. We are doing good here. Um, just in case I forget later, I will not be doing a video next week. We are heading over to Phoenix next week to visit my father-in-law and to pick up our car and drive it back. So, um, no time for a video next week, but other than that, things are going good. All good here. Um, seems to me there was something I was going to tell you and I totally forget. Maybe it'll come to me, you know, on a personal note. There's a lot of other things we're going to talk about today. So, I have a finish. I have a new start and a kind of almost new start. I have whips, I have haul, I have giveaways, and I have a new section that I'm going to call tips and tricks. So I get a lot of great questions from you guys, like all of the floss tubers do, right? You come to us for information and we are happy to help. Um, so I'm going to answer the questions in the videos as much as I can. If it's a tip or a trick that I can share, if it's something I can show you. I have had a great response to my basics of cross stitch videos. So um, think of these as more basics, but just encapsulated into my um, floss tube videos. I thought about doing them as separate videos, but a lot of them are just not long enough to do that. So um, tips and tricks. They won't necessarily happen every video, but when I get a good question that I think is something that um, would be good, good to share with everybody, I will have a tips and tricks. So I do have something for this week and I think the next couple of weeks already planned out. So I hope you enjoy those. Let's see. New start, or no, not new start, finish. We start with finishes. All right, most of you have seen this in various places around the interwebs. Pretty Little India is finished. This was a Stitch Mania start in 2018. So I am thrilled that I have it finished. And yes, this just makes me smile. Look at this little elephant with his little umbrella on it. The Taj, of course. I've been to a number of these places, and there are several on here that I would still love to visit someday. So that is stitched on 36 count, just plain old white Zweigert linen, um, called for DMC, one thread over two. Finished. Yay, go me. Continuing to work on the Prim Stitch Society Part 2, which is called Joy and Contentment. Get it in the frame. I This got kind of left alone for a, a good part of this past week because I was so close to finishing Pretty, Pretty Little India that I really concentrated on that. The next part of this, Part 3, comes out Oh, on either the 5th or the 6th, um, so I better get cracking if I want to get part 2 done and get its frame done, or at least close to being done. 
25 count Lugana stitched over one with the RFL, the called for RFL cotton. And yeah, I'm loving this. So in this one I have the, to finish the strawberries in the pot. And I think there's a, another star down here to match that star. And there might be something else up there. Wait, I can show you. I keep looking over here because I have the camera flipped around. <laughs> My phone flipped around from how I usually have it. So that is what it looks like. Oh, there's a bird up there. That's what's up there. So yeah, still quite a bit of stitching to do on that. And I did it again, looked over there. Farewell to anger. So I think when I picked this up, I was around 1.75% done. I think I'm at 2.86. <laughs> so it doesn't sound like much progress, but this is pretty much a full week of stitching. Full, actually a full two weeks of stitching, I guess. About 300 and some stitches every night. And yeah. Adore this. Adore these colors. This is again 25 count Lugana stitched over one with a called for DMC. This is going to get put away for, I don't know, hopefully not too long. But um, I had some new starts. So, that's the current stuff. That wasn't very much. <laughs> Lots of stitching though. Um, magazine Monthly Challenge Facebook group. If you are in that group, you know that we started our challenge yesterday, September 1st. So what that is, is a Facebook group created by Carolyn Zook and I'm going to screw up your name again, Robin. I'm going to look it up. Okay, so what that is, is a, is a Facebook group that was started by Carolyn Zook and Robin Hall to kind of get us into and stitching from all of those magazines that we subscribe from, to, that we look at when they come in, and we say, oh, I like that, and I like that, and then we set it aside and never do it. <laughs> Sound familiar? They decided to do something about it. So every month they are going to have a challenge of a monthly theme of something to stitch and then an acrostic that you can either choose to do or not to do, choose to use it as you see fit. There's not really any hard and fast rules to any of this. It's all just good fun, right? So um, I at first wasn't going to join in because I have enough on my plate, but I can never resist temptation. So I looked through my digital magazine stash on Readly the app, Readly, and I, my original plan was to do this little pin keep. So these are acorns done in variegated silk in queen stitch, and I thought it would be a great way to try a new stitch to me, the queen stitch, and also use the thread pickers variegated silk that I got. So I did. I started it, I practiced the queen stitch and then I started it and I decided that um, I don't like the way queen stitch looks all scrunched together like that. It totally loses any definition. The, the acorn caps are done with the queen stitch horizontally. 
the body of the acorn is done with the queen stitch verti vertically and um, it just didn't throw me at all. The queen stitch isn't a hard stitch, it's easy enough to do, but um, yeah, I knew that th th this isn't something that was making my heart happy. So I decided instead that I am doing this one. Now the Queen Stitch Acorns is from Sampler and Antique Needlework issue winter 2014. They're, they're like a set, an autumn set with pin keep and uh, scissor tool, scissor holder type of thing. Um, this little cottage is from the fall 2015 issue. So I wanted to just keep whatever I was doing small. You know, because in amongst everything else, I just wanted a little taste of this. As you know, I am not a big orange fan or a big yellow fan. So my colors on this are going to be totally different. And I also wanted to stick to what I got from Thread Pickers, which I got a lot of, of threads from them, but they're pretty much all blues and greens because, you know, those are my colors. So... What you're going to see is a lot of blues and greens. My pumpkins are not going to be orange. There are blue pumpkins and white pumpkins, right? That's what this is. So I just have the top part done, the kind of scrolly border on the top. And then this little pumpkin over here. And I am quite thrilled with it. This is done on 36 count parchment linen by Weeks Dye Works, so I am using one strand of floss over two linen threads. So, my other colors are all not very autumn-like. Blues and greens. We have a red for the door. This is gonna be the color for the outline of the house. This will be the roof of the house. And then other, so many other pretty colors, but that's definitely not your traditional fall colors. So that is started, that'll get finished. This is another one of my hour a day projects, um, along with squirrel just ran past. No road runners here, at least not in the RV park. Um, along with the Prim Stitch series, I have not started another Christmas one yet, or I haven't gone back to the Cedar Hill Christmas one yet. Um, so when this is the autumn one's done, I'll probably do that. So my other almost new start, oh, did I pull up a picture of this? I don't think I did. Hold on. I mentioned to you the Baroque sampler from Historische Stick Uster. That's a very poor saying of that word. I need to see if I can, because I can't, I can't make that zoom in any for you. The, the designers at that shop have created an app So there's the Readly app right there for those that are interested. This is called Silk. They created an app in which you can purchase their patterns and also work their patterns. So instead of going to the Historische Stickmuster site, you can purchase them through here. They have some free patterns. So it tells you, I clicked on that first one, it tells you how much it costs and you know, the details about it. What colors are used and then recommended. And then you can also, like I said, I'm not going to show you, so like that. You can work the pattern in the app. Now, they don't send you a PDF or anything. You buy, you buy it through this and you work it in this you can't mark your stitches in any way. So in that regard, um, it's a little bit 
it's definitely not as friendly as Pattern Keeper or even as good notes as far as um, you know marking your patterns or working with your patterns but um, you know it's it's here I'm using it so I want to see if I can make that picture bigger for you okay so you can see it better so this is the Baroque sampler it is 300 by 659 so it's a big one really so many just gorgeous motifs in this I was originally planning again to use the thread pickers silks that I have um, and I started it last night and I just using one of the pretty colors there and I just I mean it's it's pretty But it definitely doesn't have the feel of, you know, what I showed you there, right? The more traditional colors. So I decided to go back to Thread Pickers and buy the silks that are those colors. So that's coming at some point. You know, they're in the UK, so it'll take however long it takes. So this will get put aside and I'm going to take out what I've done here. This will get put aside until I get those silks. So that, that was the quasi start. Now, the fabric. Let's talk about the fabric. This is another piece from Vicki Clayton. This is a 40 count unbleached linen. And let me tell you guys, it's gorgeous. It almost has a shine to it. Now it is very thin. See that, see how see-through that is? You can see me through it probably. It is, the holes are quite, let me see, put something dark up behind it. I mean, the holes are quite open. It's very easy to stitch on. Um, yeah, it, it's a gorgeous, again, she, um, she has this woven especially for her. It's just a gorgeous feel, a gorgeous linen. She does say that the 40 count is the, the yarn used, the thread used for weaving it. The threads are slightly thinner than traditional, so um, it is a much more lightweight and a much more open weave. This has a slightly, a very much a cream look to it cream color to it. The other unbleached linen she has is a, is a 36 count and um, it is more white and she says in her description on her website that this is a little more cream because it's not bleached quite as much as the 36 count. But I wanted to get something fairly pale for this piece um, without it being white and I am thrilled with this. I did get a full half um, and I think it was $16. And then I cut off, I only needed, um, what was it, 19? I think 19 across. Anyways, cut off a big chunk of this and only used half of it, so I still have a, a nice chunk left. I got out my new sewing machine, my new to me sewing machine, to zigzag the edges silly me I don't have any thread here <laughs> I didn't pack thread I got rid of my sewing machine <laughs> so um, I have the I, I did there was still a bobbin in the machine so thank you Rachel for the bobbin as well and actually there's I for some reason there's a bobbin in my little notions bag I think when I was packing up like I said things just got thrown willy-nilly into things so I have a sewing bobbin in my notions bag um, but anyways, I need to get to Joanne's and get a spool of thread so I can whip up the edges of this. Now, I have decided, and I've ordered from Amazon, um, a set of the handy clamp scroll frames that I use. I am gonna put this on a scroll frame. Um, 
I had some before. They're the ones that have the Q-snap like clamps on them to attach the fabric to the rod. I don't like the ones where you have to base the fabric. Um, these are quick and easy to put on and roll up. The ones I had though were so old that, um, and you know, have been used and abused over the years that some of the threads on the screws attaching both going into the scroll frame and on the um, the, hand, the knob that you, you know, put on the ends, um, the threads were, were um, stripped. That's the word I'm looking for. So I had Mike wrestle with them for a while. To try. I couldn't get some of the knobs off. So I had Mike wrestle with them for a while and he's just like, you know, these are, these are basically useless at this point. So I just, I'm buying a new set. It should be here tomorrow, I think. Um, so this is going to go on a scroll frame. You guys know I don't usually use scroll frames, but um, for this one, I want it to kind of stay nice looking, nice and flat. I will probably still have it loose enough that I can, um, I don't know whether I'll be able to do the sewing method or not because I use my left hand so much. And that's actually going to be one of the tips and tricks probably next week about how I man manipulate things with my left hand when I'm doing the sewing method. But anyway, um, so this is actually going to get put away for a little bit. There was something else I was going to put on scroll frames. Oh, my Jeanette Douglas one. The, the center star quilt one that will be going with me I had planned on starting that um, Labor Day weekend and we will be in Phoenix so that's this coming weekend right um, so I'm gonna be taking it with me we are flying over there on Southwest I'm not thrilled about that but it's what makes the most sense and then driving the car back so lots of stitching time in the car again um, let's see I think that was all of that. Tips and tricks. So what I wanted to share with you today, like I said, most of these are just real quick things. I had originally been planning to share with you um, something that, a little tool that I use. Um, it's called a snag nabbit. The question I got was how to keep your stitches neat. And if there was a way to neaten them up after stitching. And I recommend to, re recommended to her to use the snag nabbit. Well, I got mine out. Let me actually get it back out again. I put it away because I decided um, I wasn't going to demonstrate it. Because when I practiced with it, I was not happy with the results. Let me pull this out of here. It's made by Clover either Clover or Darice. We had them in the yarn store that I worked at. Um, so it comes on kind of a paper, a, a cardboard, you know, hanging thing. Um, but it, it, it stays stored, or it should, in this little plastic casing. So what it is, it's kind of a needle type of thing. It has a pointy end but it has this rough section up here. You can see that it's kind of sandpaper-like. And I've used it in the past for, um, you know, if you have a, a tail when you're stitching, if you have a tail that comes back up through the fabric from the back, you can use this to, it goes, you push it down through the fabric and the rough edges um, will pull down on the fibers from up above. I had that happen on Grace and I used this on that and it worked fine. Um, but I did some practice fixing before I started this video. And what I found is that if you are not careful, so if you have an X that you know you wanna tuck back down in, right? If you're pushing this down through one of the holes, if you're not careful, it can catch the thread from the stitch next to it and totally fray it. 
and I tried this two or three times and it happened every time. I had never had it happen before, but of course now that I want to demonstrate it, it happens, right? So if you have, if you have this and have used it successfully, I'd love to hear from you. If you don't have this, would like to try it, I um, recommend caution because I, it, it really kind of, I did it on a couple places on Pretty Little India and it kind of like muffed up the, the stitches, the, the thread and the stitches surrounding what I was doing. I was not happy. So other tips though on how to correct messed up stitches or how to prevent them from happening. I do have a couple of videos that I will link below that talk, where I talk about um, for the sewing method or really anytime you're stitching with two strands, how to pay attention to how your thread is curving so that when you go back down, the th motion follows that natural curve of the thread and the thread automatically lays parallel to each other. I very rare, rarely rare railroad. If I do, it's an accident. My needle got in between the two strands. For those that don't know, railroading, you have your two strands of floss. You, before you stick your needle in the hole as you're going back down, you put it in between the two strands of floss and pull it down. And that helps to keep the two strands separated and laying parallel. So that is certainly one method to help keep your, your stitches neat and tidy. The thing to think about though, if, if you've already done the stitch and you go back and it's messed up. You can try the snag, snag nab it. I oftentimes just, you know, it's all about tension a lot of times and I'll just pull one strand or the other to get it straightened out or I'll, I'll mess with my needle to, to get the, the, um, the two parts of the X to lay nicely together. When the reason it happens sometimes is if you are working an area and you have a bunch of stitches already done and you go back to fill in stitches, the process of bringing the needle back up through the fabric in a hole that already has stitches in it, that's called a dirty hole, will disrupt the stitches around it. So my recommendation is trying to be as neat as possible when you're bringing your needle back up through to keep it away from and not snagging the other, um, the other stitches. Now the best way to make sure you keep your stitch stitches neat and tidy is to always come up in a clean hole, a hole without any stitches in it, and go down in a dirty hole, a hole that already has some stitches in it. That is in a perfect world and I know there are some of you out there that are very disciplined to do that. I am not. For a variety of reasons, there's a squirrel that keeps running back and forth and it keeps distracting me. Um, there's a variety of reasons why I don't, um, I don't stitch that way. Mostly it's just lack of discipline. Um, but you can see I have a lot of stitches to fill in on Farewell to Anger. Um, a lot of times it will be what's the most logical direction for me to go. And sometimes I'm feeling super frugal and I don't want to stretch across four stitches. I only want to stretch across two. And so I'll come up in a dirty hole and go down in a clean hole. But really to, to have your best looking stitches, you should be coming up in a clean hole. There goes that squirrel again. <laughs> He's teasing me um, to come up in a clean hole and go down in a dirty hole. Okay, so that was one of the things I wanted to talk about. The other thing I wanted to talk about is also in relation to Vicki Clayton. I need to take a drink, hold on. So Vicki has listed on her website for fabric, a fabric that's, also, that's called an uneven weave. And I think it's 26 by 32 is one of them. And I think there's another one, I don't know. I don't remember what it is. So somebody asked me, what does that mean? And um, is it okay to stitch on? So what it is, as, as she surmised, and as you probably surmise, is that when they've woven it, there are more threads per inch one way than the other way. So 32 going one way and 26 going the other way. 
And what this ends up doing is making your stitches, um, your, your finished piece kind of out of whack, right? It's not it's not 32 by 32 so you're going if it's 26 by 32 and the 32 is this way um, you'll end up with it looking narrower than what the finished piece should look if it's the other way it'll end up looking longer so it has an effect on what the finished piece looks like because of more threads or less threads one way than the other so if you decide, if you come across a piece like that, if you decide that you want to give that a try, you can certainly stitch on it, but just be aware that it's going to make your end piece look a little different than the original, and you have to decide if that's okay. One of the pieces I started in 2018, the Lighthouse, I'm using a, I think it's a 30 by 32. And that was okay, because if the lighthouse is a little bit wider or a little bit longer, I don't really care. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. So that's something, when you see that kind of fabric, don't totally discount it. If it's, if it's a color that you think would be perfect, think, is that something that can still work for me? Am I okay? I told um, the person that asked that 26 by 32 is kind of a bigger, change than what you normally see. You, don't, you usually only see a couple thread difference, um, so that's going to have a bigger effect. But again, it might be something that, that's perfectly fine. So there's that little tidbit. All right, new stuff. And I'm going to have some giveaways on this video, so stick around. All right, you know I absolutely love the Cedar Hill um, bouquets. And I've actually been looking around a bit and um, oh, Sharon Hutchinson, was it you? I can't remember now, who um, gave me tips on different shops that have them. Now, just because a shop is listed them doesn't mean they necessarily have them. These are old charts. Like I said, this the Cedar Hill company is no longer in business producing charts. So if a store still has them in their inventory, um, you know, that then it's just pure luck. They're not able to restock. And then you have 1884 Stitchery, McKenna, right, who goes around and finds um, people's stash that they're getting rid of, stores that are closing that are getting rid of stash. And so she had a couple of them, which I snapped up flowers from the meadow. Love that. And what is this one? Country iris. Isn't that pretty? I'm not going to get all of the different months. I do like them. Um, but I'll probably just get a couple more if I find them. Actually, Sharon did, I think if it's Sharon, um, did tell me some shops and I just haven't gone to them yet and said, do you really have this in stock? The other thing I got from McKenna is this one. It's Cross Stitch and Applique Collection, Shabby Chic Christmas. Isn't that pretty? This is very much in line with the colors from um, the By the Bay Needle Arts wool applique one that I got and started. And it is still in Hawaii. That's what I was gonna tell you, personal. Our stuff got packed up from our apartment yesterday, so it is in the process of shipping here, which means it'll still be two months, but <laughs> it started. It's out of the apartment. So, anyways, homespun elegance. Isn't that pretty? All right, fiber on a whim. First of all, Congratulations to Stephanie Hess. She won the giveaway on my Facebook group for the Fiber on a Whim sampler pack of fabrics. So um, they will be sent out to her today from Fiber on a Whim in North Carolina. These fabrics are the ones that I had ordered from the Stitchy Box. They carry Fiber on a Whim fabrics. Now, like I said, 
you can get, if you're an Ada stitcher, you can get their fabrics on their website. They do sell Ada on their website. They do not sell their linens. I don't know why. You can only get their linens through a retailer, a store. And Stitchy Box is one of the ones that carries them. So I got two. This is Topaz. Again, these are both 36 count. These are the ones that got almost mailed and then not mailed and then almost mailed and then not mailed. Isn't that gorgeous? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that is Topaz. And this is pistachio. And these colors are showing pretty up, pretty good, true to color today. So I am thrilled with those. I see more fiber on a whim fabric in my future. All right. The last thing I have to talk about and then some giveaways is from Fat Quarter Shop. They have found me <laughs> and are once again sending me stuff to share with you. So I showed you this one earlier. This is number two, Joy and Contentment. I assume they're going to continue to send me these. I did not get the first one. Um, because I was in transition, so they sent me the PDF. They sent me the PDF for the second one, and I sure hope they continue to send me the PDFs. Um, but I hope they continue to send me the hard copy as well, because I will share them with you. So again, you can do these individually, or you can do them all on one piece of fabric. I'm doing them all on one piece of fabric. The called for is 25 count Lugana over two. Let's see. The stitch count is 74 by 74, so small pieces, and I'm sure that includes the border. This is one of my giveaways, so if you are interested in this, say, I like Prim, comment below, I like Prim. Second, sew by row. So another Lori Holt, right? It's so Emma be in my bonnet. Yeah. This is my next giveaway. And so if you are interested in this, say, I like sewing. And then last but not least, we have their next set of stitch cards which are Halloween focused. If you want these, say, I like Halloween. Now, you can ask for every one if you want. If you like them all, you will only win one. You, do, you can be international to, um, to join in. Don't say giveaway, don't say freebie, don't say contest, any of that. You know the drill. So, Several other things from Fat Quarter Shop. And I will say right now that um, I am an affiliate for them. So any links below that you might happen to click on, I will get a small portion as a kickback if you make a purchase. So thank you for that. Um, they have a new stitch along coming up in October, Stitchtober they are calling it. And they have three patterns for that. This is one of them. And this is kind of interesting how they're doing this. And I have to admit, I don't totally understand. So this is called, let me go to my email and actually read the email um, from Kate about it. Mix and match, free Halloween 2020 mix and match PDF pattern. So um, they have a free border that you can download from their website and I will have that linked below. And then you can make as many of these as you want, I guess. And I will have I will have their information from their website linked below. So that is one of their Stitchtober plans. The other one, and this is the one that I will be doing, is Pumpkins for Sale. So that is this one. Super cute. 
again, I'm sure I will be doing it over one. Maybe, ooh, no, that wouldn't work with the green or the blue. There's the blue and the dungarees. Hmm, I was gonna think and maybe I could do, do it on one of these. But anyways, I'll probably do it over one on something. I don't know. So pumpkins for sale is one of them. And then they are also, and they have, I'm gonna show you guys this stuff. You'll love it. They have a Halloween project bag here. So this is the next one, Fright Night Mystery Downloadable Pattern Series. So mystery stitch along for Halloween. Let me make that bigger for you. That's their little sneak peek. So that will be going on the month of October. It's a four-parter series again, I believe. Um, four or five, depending on how many Fridays there are in October. Um, just like the Feels Like Home one, they'll release a new piece of it every Friday. Um, again, I will have this all linked below. I wanted to show you too, though. They have this pumpkin needle minder. And then, let's see if it's still on page one. I think they've added some stuff so things are getting real. Oh. Look at the kitty needle minder. Isn't that awesome? So anyway, that's what's coming up with Fat Quarter Shop in October, Stitchtober. Stitch Alongs Galore. I will be doing the pumpkins for sale one, so you will be seeing that in my future. They have both DMC and Weeks Dye Works or Classic Color Works, I think. Um, alternatives for these, I will be stitching that in Weeks Dye Works. I think that is all I had to share with you today. Yep, looks like it. So, let me know if you have any questions. And as always, guys, if I've mentioned anything in this video, please look below for the links. Let me, let me show you what I mean by that. You know, I don't mind answering your questions. I really don't. But I get a lot of repeats on, what's the link for that? What's the link for that? What's the link for that? I really do try to put all the links in the show notes below. So if you have a question about something, check there first. And if I haven't linked there, then please comment and ask me. Chances are I've forgotten. Okay. There's a little tiny arrow right over here. See that? Tap on that and it opens up all this information, all the links. And they are, they are linked, so you can just tap on it and it will open up in a new page. Ta-da! And whatever is the relevant website. Okay? Okay. All right, guys. Last but not least. Does she look familiar? Yeah, I think Teresa does probably repeat the angels through the cards because, of course, she doesn't have 52 angels. <laughs> Again, relevant. When life gets difficult, get up, get dressed, and look yourself in the mirror and say, not today, I've got this. That's not easy to do. There have been plenty of days where it's like, nah, nah, not today, I don't got this. And that's okay, too because in these times, who can blame you? But hopefully more often than not, you do get up and say, yeah, I'm good, I got this. Guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for all of your support. I hope you will join us on my Facebook page. I hope you will join us in the monthly magazine challenge if that's something you're interested in. I look forward to seeing everything that you're stitching and I look forward to talking to you later. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.